Ella was born exactly 23 months after Lily. We were sort of adjusting as a family of five, and the dynamic was great because it felt like our family was sort of complete. Probably starting in September of 2019, she started just to get ill more often. And it was always sort of dismissed as like, well, she's the third child and she's gonna get sick maybe more so than the other two. But then she stopped wanting to crawl. The next day, we went into the pediatrician. Um, I insisted that they run blood work just to make sure that everything was okay. And then the next morning, we woke up to five to seven missed calls on both of our phones, voicemails. I can remember exactly where I was standing when, when I woke up and I saw my phone. I was like, what the heck is going on? This is weird. And I was like, what the heck? Oncologi why, why would he say oncological event? Even when they said leukemia, the doctors were saying, okay, we can come up, we're gonna come up with a game plan. And then it was, you know, a day or two later when, you know, they came in with the news and I can still remember <laughs> when, they, when they said it. They told us that, unfortunately, she had acute myeloid leukemia, incredibly difficult to treat, very poor prognosis, and I'm not optimistic, and that she would undoubtedly need a stem cell transplant if she made it that far. Yeah, it's a storm. It's a storm. Go away, storm. She is now about 30 months post-transplant, and with every passing month, the chance of relapse goes down. But for her particular form, we're not aware of any other survivors. This type of infant uh, leukemia is incredibly aggressive, probably the most aggressive leukemia I've ever seen. And conventional therapies really don't work. I always go back to where we started this transition from working in the lab to developing treatment, and it was Stella. Okay. I'm Nurse Stella. Oh, you're Nurse Stella. All right, Nurse Stella, can you show me the way out of here? Stella was definitely a performer. We spent, you know, the years before she was sick singing and dancing, and she frankly danced and sang her way through treatment. Stella was the reason we started to completely transition to developing therapies for patients. When we first got to Seattle, we visited Sohel's lab at the Fred Hutch, and he opened up the huge tank and pulled out all cells of all the previous patients which had passed away. So our hopes were not looking good. We were gonna do everything what we could, but we also knew that she has a higher purpose and that anything that she could do, our family, to advance the ball for children so that nobody ever has to experience this again, it's worth it. And we had hope to the end. So Hale introduced us to the ciders, and now we had a real reason to fight again. Because of the support from foundations and families, we've been able to really bring this from target discovery to a treatment that's in the verge of going into clinical trial in record time. We've had no support from drug companies. Only 4% of cancer research funding goes towards children. And out of that, how much goes towards the rare cancers? Nothing. It's my belief that there needs to be an entrepreneurial solution for these children. We have everything in place. And we've shown that it's highly effective. Now we need to create this in a patient-safe manner, take it through FDA and start a clinical trial. Is it ready? Yep. Yep. Ready. <laughs> I think we only just started to think about the future and sort of envision Ella in it. And even as I say this, we have a biopsy scheduled on Monday where all of those plans for the future could change. Ella's the only one who's gotten to this point. 
if we can get through the next treatment, if we can get through the next rotation of the doctors, like the cure might be available then. 